Hello everyone, my name is Nikhil Mandoli and I am doing an internship on Embedded Systems in Emergency Technology. During this internship, I make a project named as Microwave Oven Simulation using PIC Microcontroller. And in this video, I am going to show you what I, what I learned during the internship and at last I am going to show you my project demo. So this is the contents which we are going to discuss like what is Microwave Oven, what are the requirements of this project, what is Embedded C language. Uh, what is microcontroller and microprocessors, fixing lab software and CLCD interface, matrix keypad which is going to be used as a buttons and interrupts and then ISR timer and, and last we are going to show the project demo. So basically what is microwave oven? Uh, microwave oven is used to heat the food using microwaves which is a form of electromagnetic wave. Uh, microwave oven is basically used to cook the food and for heat the food. Uh, there are several modes uh, which we are used in a microwave ovens like micro mode, grill mode, convection mode and start mode. Uh, micro mode is basically a mode in which uh, we are going to cook uh, basic items like when we want to cook maggi, we want to cook rice, we want to uh, boiling potatoes uh, like these. Uh, it is uh, used for cooking the traditional uh, foods and when we come to a grill mode. A uh, grill mode is basically used for making the pizzas and the paneer tikka. And when we want to use our oven as a grilling mode and when we come to a convection mode, convection mode is basically used when we are going to use, uh, when we are uh, making bakery items like cakes, cookies, brownies, etc. Uh, but for convection mode, we have to preheat our oven for 3 minutes and uh, then cook it further. Uh, we all gonna show these modes uh, in our project. And yeah. These are the requirements of our project like uh, what we use for making a project like first one is the MPLAB XID. ID stands for Internet Development Environment like uh, where we written our code and then X X8 compiler. The compiler uh, the compiler is uh, stands for the uh, like this device which is used to uh, which is used to convert a high level language into a machine level language. And uh, machine level language like uh, convert in the form of 0 and 1 cause our computer is also uh, is only understand the language of uh, 0 and 1 high or low. Uh, then we come to a Pixim lab software where we are going to use the Pix Genius board uh, in which we use the Pix 16 FX77 microcontroller and these are the uh, other interfaces like uh, we are going to use 6, uh, 16 to 4 CLCD and tactile switch, matrix keypad and timers. These are basically the uh, basically uh, the peripherals which are we going to use in our project. Yeah. Uh, let me come to embedded C. Uh, what is embedded C? What is C programming? What is loops? What is iteration? What is number system? Uh, we are going to discuss all of these things here. Uh, first what is C language? C language is basically a general purpose language which is effectively used in various specific domains. Uh, and uh, why we use C language? Because C language is very efficient and uh, it is very portable and it is very easy to use. Uh, this is the basically the content of the C language like what we return in our C code. Uh, like first documentation, our preprocessor statements, our global declaration. Uh, here, we de here we declare all the global variables which are used in uh, the entire code and the main code like uh, when our compiler is going to read our code uh, first is come to the this uh, main, main and then it move further. And last there is a functions like a function is just a uh, basic codes uh, which we uh, uh, which we use are in program uh, regularly regularly and uh, many times and then there is a syntax or C code like first we have the preprocessor directive uh, let me conclude this very simply like uh, these are the header files and header files contain the libraries uh, when we have to when we have to use the particular library function then we have to uh, then we have to include this uh, include this header file to our code. Like when we use this printf statement, printf statement is a library function uh, which is come from this stdio.h header file. And this is the and yeah, there is a comments. Comments is basically when we have to uh, when we have to explain our code, uh, then we use comments. And yeah, uh, there is a number system. Number system is a very important topic when we are going to use the embedded C programming. Uh, number system basically the representation of our numbers in four ways like decimals, octal, hexadecimal, binary and these all codes are differenced by their basic like uh, in decimal we have a base 10, 
octal we have a base 8 hexadecimal we have a base 16 and binary we have a base 2 uh, base represent the uh, the range of numbers which are going to use like in decimal we have a base 10 so we are going to use the number from 0 to 9 octal from 0 to 7 and uh, from hexadecimal 0 to 16 uh, sorry 15 and binary uh, 0 and 1 like when you see here 0 1 2 3 5 7 9 and after 9 we have a b c d e these represent the 15 16 17 18 and 19 and yeah and these are the size size yani ki 8 bits for 8 bits decimals has 0 to 255 octal has 0 uh, this is not a 0 this is o this is a representation of octal decimals like 0 0 to 377 hexadecimal we have a 0 x 0 x a representation of hexadecimal numbers and 0 xff and 0 b is a representation of binary number these are the 8 bits like when you see here 0 xff and when we move it f stands for 1 1 1 1 and further f and you keep 1 1 1 1 when you see here we convert the hexadecimal into a binary number like they go 1 1 1 and 1 1 1 1 uh, let me move further yeah these are data representation like how we represent our data uh, first is bit byte and word we represent our data in three ways bit byte and word a uh, bit stands for binary digit binary means two like uh, only high and low one and zero uh, when you see here like binary digit binaries bi and digit d combine and we get the bit like byte a uh, byte is a combination of bits a uh, one byte consists of eight bits it be like when we have to write one we write zero 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 one and word and word is a collection of bytes like uh, one byte uh, one word contains four bits and we know that uh, one byte contains eight bits so one word contains 32 bits like when you see here when we have to uh, write one in binary form we write this like it was a four, one bit two bit three bit four bit five bit and this is the 32 bit and when you come to byte this whole a uh, one 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 byte this is all a uh, four bit and when uh, and our next topic is uh, basic data type and mod modifier data type is basically the types of data which we used in our programs uh, program like we have a care int float and double int is basically a integer numbers care is a character number like a b c d and float and doubles are the decimal numbers and these are the modifiers uh, modifiers are uh, modifiers are used to modify the size and the signs uh, size and the signs of uh, of our data is like when we use the short and long like uh, for int the uh, the size of int is 4 but when we use the short int uh, then the size of our int is becomes 2 and when we use the long int the size of int is becomes 8 uh, this is basically the user modifier uh, and when we you and, and when we come to a sign like that there are two types first is sign and second is unsigned sign means uh, negative uh, it contains also negative number and positive numbers and unsigned means it contains only positive numbers uh, we know that the range of uh, our int, uh, integer numbers are 0 to 255 but when we come to a sign the range of uh, our integer number is becomes a minus 120 6 to plus 125 now let me move to a conditional statements conditional statements are used when we have to uh, when we have to give the condition to a program or when we want to um, run our program many times conditional constructs are there are two types single iteration and multi iteration single iteration consists of if and its family and switch cases and multi iteration consists of for while and do while uh, when we uh, first we come to a single iteration single iteration have three things if else and if letters uh, let me explain all of these to you uh, first is if uh, we give a condition to if our condition is true then our code is done then if our condition is false our code is not done else uh, in else if uh, if our condition is true then this statement is done uh, but if this statement not true then this statement is done and when we come to an if else letter if this statement is true this one if else if this statement is true this one and when these two statements are false then our else is done 
uh, when we come to a switch case switch case is that uh, when we want to run many conditions at a time like uh, this is the uh, see here switch expression if our case one is true this code is done if our if our case two is true this code is done and default um, default or this code is done and when we come to a multi iteration multi iteration consist of loops loops is stand for when we want to run a program many times we use the loop there are three types of loop while loop two while loop and for loop while loop uh, in while loop while or this condition is true then or this statement is run uh, many times pointer until this condition is true in do while uh, do while and while has a one difference like in do while loop the first condition does not check after our uh, after our first iteration is done uh, then the condition is checked and until this condition is true the loop is again and again again is uh, running and uh, let it move for for has three iteration like in it uh, where we initialize condition uh, which is the condition and post evolution like uh, uh, this is the uh, incre increment uh, what we increment in our code and these the statements now we come to our next topic which is operator operator can be defined as a symbol that helps us to perform specific mathematical relational bitwise conditional logical computation on operands in other words we can say that operator operates the operand so when we want to uh, when we want uh, when we want to do an algebraic expression uh, and a relational expression so we use the operator for example when we use the plus operator a plus b is equals to c we use this plus operator and these are the operands operands are those in which our operator is applied and these are the types of operator there are five type of operator like arithmetic of uh, right arithmetic operator relational operator logical operator bitwise operator assignment operator and these are the examples of this operator let me explain you further uh, and what are arithmetic operator these operators are used to perform arithmetic uh, mathematic uh, operations like when we want to plus minus multiply divide and these all are the uh, examples of arithmetic operator and uh, and now the next relational operator relation operators are those operators uh, operator when we want to check the relation between our two variables or two numbers and uh, two characters and there is a is equals to greater than is equals to less than is equals to now we come to logical operator logical operator basically contains of zero and one or true and false and the next is bitwise operator uh, the bitwise operator used to perform bit level operation to operand uh, the operators are first converted to bit level and then calculations performed on the operand mathematical operations are addition subtraction multiplication these are all the uh, then on the bitwise operators in the bit level and then at last the assignment operator assignment of that uh, we assign the value to uh, when we assign the value to uh, something like when we declare the variable we write uh, a is equals to 2 like is equals to is equals to the assignment operator that we assign the value to to our op to our variable a and now the our next topic is array there is a basically a collection of sim uh, same data types and the uh, it stores the address and when we want to uh, when we want to add many numbers in a list then we use the arrays and now we have string string is also a type of array but in which only characters are there and these are the contiguous sequence of characters uh, these store the ascii values and end with the backslash zero uh, these are how we write how we declare a string like uh, care str is equals to these this type this type this type and this type and these are the library function like when we want uh, to check or uh, check the length of our string we use the str length when we want to compare the two strings we use the str comp when we want to copy the two strings uh, when we want to copy the one string to another we use the str cop str cpy when we uh, and uh, when we use to check the character we use str chr when we want to merge the uh, string we use the concatenate like str ch and the next are pointers uh, pointer is basically a variable which stores the address of another variable uh, when you see here like x x has a address 1000 and the value of x is 5 then there is a other pointer variable which stores the value of x which is 1000 and it has a another address 20, uh, 2000 like there is another variable 
it stored the value uh, which is stored the address of 2000 and this is a another very another variable another address like this is the int main int x these are pointer variable pointer variable these are pointer variable asterisk ptr this stored the value so basically pointers pointing uh, containing uh, means contain like pointers contain the address uh, now we come to referencing and differencing referencing means when we want to store the address we use the end and when we write the value we use the star when we come to a function a function in C is a set of statement that when called to perform a specific task it is basic uh, building block of C program that provide modularity and code reusability uh, when we want to reuse our code many times then we uh, then we make a function of that code and use it again and again uh, the syntax of a function can be divided to three expl like function declaration here we declare the function then function definition here we write the code of our function function call and function calls where our function is called uh, and the next is how our function is called like first here there is a int main like uh, first here there is a int main uh, first our compiler uh, first our compiler come and read this when we come to a sum add number is equals to a it calls the function here the function is calling uh, we come here here the function is declaring and this is the function uh, definition uh, here we add the function very specific uh, function is uh, declare here function is definition here and function is call here int mean see this and calling the function from above at the parameters passing types there are two types pass by value pass by value in pass by value we directly call the numbers and by pass by value uh, we call the function by the uh, pointers or by the address of the numbers the method copies the actual value of argument in the formal parameter of the function and, uh, and on the other side pass by reference this is the method copies the address of the argument so now let me move to our next topic is embedded system so what is embedded system basically embedded system is a device which is a, which is a combination of software and hardware and is used to perform a specific task so embedded system, uh, like I said, an embedded system is a combination of computer, hardware and software designed for a specific function. Embedded system is also a function with large system. The system can be programmable or have fixed functionality. Uh, like uh, around us, there are many uh, like many electronic devices which are uh, example of embedded system. Like I am using my mouse right now, so it is also an embedded system. My mobile phone is also an embedded system. And the embedded system is used in industrial industrial machines, in agriculture processes, in household appliances. Like in our in our project, mm -hmm. we use a uh, we make a microwave oven, which is also a which is also a household appliance uh, appliance consisting of hardware as well as software. Like the fan, uh, the fan, the body, and the grilling and the heater of our microwave oven is a part of hardware and. Uh, uh, when we simulate it uh, and when we get uh, and when we ask it that this button do this and that button do that these are part of a software so like uh, this is software plus hard with embedded system and these are the examples like industrial machines consumer electronics digital watches and household appliances uh, let's see move further like this is a very important topic microcontroller microprocessor and what's the difference between them a microcontroller is a CPU like it contains all of these components in a single chip like CPUs, memories, input and output all the peripherals and uh, while in microprocessor this is only a central processing unit and any other devices are connected externally. A uh, microprocessor is used in personal computer whereas microcontroller is used in an embedded system. Microprocessor based on a knock based on von Neumann's model microcontroller based on Harvard architecture so this is this a microcontroller like in uh, in microcontroller all the peripherals are in a single chip like uh, our ROM, our memories, our timer, our CPU, our input and output and a serial interface which is used for a communication between the devices and uh, while in microprocessor there is a only CPU and all these peripherals are connected externally uh, so uh, let me move to our PIC 16FX77A microcontroller. 
after making this project we use a we use a microcontroller of pic genius family that's pic 16 and 778 uh, the pic 16 and 77 is a capable microcontroller that can do many tasks because it has a large enough programming memory and the pic 1677a has a 40 pins in which 33 are input output ports it is a 8 bit microcontroller uh, let's we move to a um, pin outs of a uh, pic 1677 like where you see the pin number 11 as vdd vss uh, these are our gpios and when we move to this this is the architecture of our pixim lab like how the external peripherals are connected to our PIC 16 f 877 microcontroller like LEDs, buzzers, digital keypad or matrix keypad or display or temporary sensor or converters and as well as our GPIOs. And now this is a software which we are going to use for implementation and simulation of our, of our microwave oven using the microcontroller. And the name of the software is Pixim Lab. Pixim Lab stands for Programmable IC uh, Simulator Laboratory. So this is the interface of our Pix 16 a board. Here is the LEDs. Here is our matrix keypad. Here is our LC display. Here is our fan. Uh, this fan represent our oven is on or not. Uh, and this is uh, and this is our connector. These are serial ports which are used for communication. These are MOSFET and you say many other things uh, for this project we use these peripherals uh, mainly uh, like led sectile switch clcd which we are going to use 16 to 4 clcd or matrix keypad or interrupts in our timers uh, so uh, these are first peripheral which is led so what is led led stands for light emitting diodes so whenever we pass the current to an led it emits light it emits light is the basic uh, function of a led uh, it we use LED because it's a low energy consumption. It has lower life. It has smaller size, faster switching, make it usable in wide application fields like home lighting, remote control, surveillance display, etc. And this is the connection of an ID or, or LED. Our LED has a two uh, uh, two connect, uh, two pins like first one is anode and second one is anode. The the cathode pin is connected to a switch to ground while our anode pin is connected to our uh, microcontroller. And this is the LEDs interface on a Pixim Lab board. Like we uh, in in Pixim Lab board, all the LEDs are connected into port B and port D. Uh, there are total 16 LEDs, 8 in port B and 8 in port D. For use of uh, this LED, we used a corresponding resistor which uh, tells us the path of the LEDs, trace B and trace B. And the total LEDs are 18. Uh, so we check the connection of its LED further. Uh, yeah, let's we move to a tactile switch. Tactile switch is used uh, is used for switching effect. Like uh, the switch is used to select the mode of operation to enter the temperature and to enter the arc project. Like when we enter this tactile switch, it uh, uh, tactile switch there is a there is a certain operation which is going to be performed. Uh, for this uh, for this project, we use a tactile switch for setting our temperature for setting our modes. For start, stop, and pause our pro uh, project, and then, uh, so uh, our tactile switch is connected in two ways. First one is pull up circuit, second one is pull down circuit. In pull up circuit, we see that our switch is connected to a uh, switch pin is connected to a microcontroller, and then is ground. Like uh, this is used the current sourcing circuit. Means our microcontroller is a current sourcing circuit. Our microcontroller gives current to a switch, and goes to the ground while in pull down circuit our switch uh, our switch is connected to a pd like 5 volt in it all the currents from the 5 volt is directly uh, going to the ground so it's a pull down circuit but uh, for our pixim lab software our switch is con our, all the switch connected to a pull up circuit and the next is and the next is matrix keypad uh, this is a keypad in which a uh, number of tactile switch are connected in rows and in rows and columns. This are matrix keypad. These are four is to four matrix keypad, but we are going to use only these uh, uh, these uh, from till one to hash. We are going to use this uh, four is to three matrix keypad. This is how we it is connected. 
so we use the ports like RV two, RV one, and RV zero for the columns like RD three, RD two, RD one, and RD zero for the rows. Uh, this is the interrupt. This is the important topic. A interrupt is, in, is a communication process set up in microprocessor or microcontroller in which an internal or external device requests to MPU or MCU to stop the process. So whenever we want to stop our process, like when we use the delays and all, this is we use the interrupts. Then the MPU or MCU acknowledges the request and then the request uh, goes back the process where we got the interrupt. So uh, when our interrupt is called, our interrupt function is going to the ISR, ISR and then the ISR function is, uh, then the function of ISR is done and it comes back to a, a main function. And the second one is polling. In polling is a process where the computer controlling device waits for external device to check the readiness or state often uh, with low level hardware. Like so, uh, like when an external device uh, for uh, for this process polling an external device is wait until uh, until the process or uh, is uh, done or not the disadvantages of polling are loss of events may occur during polling poor response and less power management uh, then we come to a types of interrupts there are two types of interrupt basically first is hardware second one is software the hardware interrupts are of two types, non-maskable and maskable and maskable interrupts of two type external sources and internal sources. And uh, now we have a interrupt service routine ISR. In ISR is a software routine that hardware invokes in response to an input. And then the ISR attends the request of interrupting source by clearing the interrupts flag uh, should save register uh, contents that may be affected by the code in the ISR. It must be terminated uh, with the instruction RETIA. Uh, let me explain it easily. Uh, when in our code, when there is an interrupt, then there is a then when there is an interrupt and we want to uh, stop our code for a for a sake of time, uh, then our code is going to the ISR and uh, and then the ISR function is done and after that, after the completion of this function, our code is uh, come back to the main function. And so, and return from the interrupt. Yeah, this was uh, the things which I explained. So, when an interrupt uh, occur, the MPU completes the instruction being executed. Then it uh, disable global interrupt enable, places error from program and count on the stack. So, this is all about the ISR. So, now we come to the timer. The timer is an important application in any embedded system which is default peripheral, which maintains the timing of an operation in sync with the system clock and external clock. So timer has a many applications measuring time and generating delays. So we use the timers for delays. Like uh, when we want it, uh, when we want a LED have to be blink in every uh, in every five seconds. So we use the timers. Um, so there is a timer of two type. One is pre scalar and post scalar. It may be one ratio one and one ratio eight. And most of it, uh, and most of timers are counter PWM or pulse generator etc so uh, now let's we move to our project demo now i'm going to show you the code of my project uh, first we are seeing the uh, main file so in main.c uh, it includes all the main functions and all the and all the macros which we are making in different header files and it includes all the other c files and their function like uh, uh, we write the code for CLCD in CLC.C for interrupts in, in, in ISR.C for matrix keypad in matrix keypad.C and for timers we set in timers.C. So these are called first we include the main.h uh, which we are seeing in a header files. So this is whole our code. Uh, this is the uh, code for our matrix keypad like uh, when we are using the buttons what happens like uh, when we press key 2 what will happen when we are pressing key 3 what will happen like for uh, key 3 we have a convection mode key 4 we have a start mode and this is all the code and this is the code for our uh, our clc like when power on screen for, uh, for power on screen uh, for grill mode uh, for convection modes uh, this is whole our uh, main dot c Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's it. And now I'm going to uh, show you the header file of main. In header files, we define all the macros which are going to be uh, used in our many codes many times. Many times, like uh, we set the power on display uh, and this is the address of our power on screen. And these are whole uh, code for matrix dot edge or oh, for main dot edge. And now I'm going to show you our CLCD code. So these are CLCD code. Uh, we use it four bit uh, four bit mode. And this is our CL header file of CLCD. And now I'm going to show you the matrix keypad, uh, the buttons which we are going to use for controller microwave oven. Uh, and now the matrix header file of uh, matrix keypad. Then our header file of timer, then a header file so this is very small. And then our ISR, like our interrupts file. And uh, after that, uh, we build our project. Uh, from here and you can see that uh, it's still loading as you can see uh, our build is successful and now uh, we uh, and now we load the hex file in our pixim lab and now you are going to see the project implementation i'm going to show you my project demo uh, first i have to reload the hex so as you can see here is written powering on microwave oven so our microwave oven is turning on uh, I, as I told you earlier that I am going to implement the four modes of microwave oven in this project. Uh, the first mode is uh, micro mode, second is grill, third is convection, fourth one is start. Uh, first I am going to show you the micro mode. As I click on one, it shows us the power and now I have to set the time. I am uh, setting the less time of one minute and now enter. As you can see here, our fan is moving. It indicates that our oven is running right now. And uh, here is the instruction like when I am click on 5, our fan is paused. And when I am click on 4, our uh, fan is start running. And when I click on stop, uh, on clicking the 6, uh, which, is, uh, which stops the microwave oven, we back to our uh, menu. When I am click on 6, we back to our uh, main menu and second I am going to show the grill mode uh, for this I have to click on 2 when I click on 2 uh, we have to set the timer like I am uh, setting the timer also 1 here 1 and end as you can see our uh, microwave oven is running now which indicates as a fan and the same instructions uh, is here like when I am click on 5, it pauses and when I am click on 4, it start running. And, and I am going to uh, show you one thing more, when, when, our time is, uh, when, uh, when our time is done, our buzzer is waving. So uh, we have to wait for 30 seconds. As you can hear our buzzer is buzzing and uh, I am going to show you the third convection mode. As I told you earlier that for convection mode we have to set the preheating temperature. Uh, when I am click on 3, I told us to set the temperature. I set the temperature now for 100 degree centigrade and press the enter. And it is preheating now. Uh, for for showing you, we set the preheating time 
is only 18 second and whenever our preheating is done we have to uh, set the time of our cooking and as you see the buzzer is buzzing and uh, we set the time here one minute and enter and uh, for this when our uh, when our time is done our buzzer is buzzing for this also so let's wait mm, i think i have to fast forward the video Three, two, one, and our buzzer is buzzing. And uh, we have uh, remaining with our last mode, which is fourth start mode. I click on four, and just our microwave oven is only start. For start mode, we use for just heating our food. Uh, for further use, we also set the time for more. So we just wait. And whenever this completed, our buzzer is buzzing. Three, two, one. So this is the whole uh, demo of my project. Uh, now I'm going to show you one more thing. Like here is a button of of turning on LCD and turning off LCD. When I put it down. Our LCD becomes blank and when I'm turned on, our LCD become uh, on and also a button for buzzer when I'm set the uh, buzzer switch on right, it does not work and whenever I switch it left, it start working and also for our LED function like uh, uh, for port B, when I'm click on this, our LED start glowing and uh, for D also LED, some LED are start going, glowing and these are uh, controller, a uh, microcontroller, PIC 16 f 877 and these are all the components and this is my project demo. So thank you everyone. At last I wanted to thank you to the Emergy Technologies and all the mentors who taught us a very well and also this course curriculum who plays a vital role in my learning journey. Uh, so very very thank you.